Hello and welcome to Rain's Kitchen and Garden. My name is Rain. Today we are talking about canning tomatoes with a water bath canner. This is the first video of a, of a series of three videos that I'm doing about canning tomatoes. Today it's all about the theory. I'm telling you how you're going to be able to do this from start to finish. There's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of instruction. There's going to be some photos that I'm putting up. I actually have three pages of notes. <laughs> All of these notes that I'm going to be reading to you and the photos that I'm showing you they're all going to be on my tomato canning checklist and this is a PDF file that I created for you and it's in in the description below. I have a link for it. You can click on the link download the PDF file and print it out if you want. I think it's important when you're canning large amounts of anything to be organized so that you don't get overwhelmed. For me, my, my main meal always consists of a tomato base. I eat pizza, I eat a lot of pasta with tomato based sauces, um, Mexican with salsa or enchilada sauce. I make marinara sauce. So my meals are mostly tomato based. So I know that I need a lot of tomatoes in order to enjoy my meals. So that's one thing, a note on canning in general. Know what you like to eat. Um, don't get caught up in, you know, like this year I canned 300 pounds of tomatoes and that's to some people that might be outrageous but for me that's a year's worth of food don't get caught up in canning things just because you can can them make sure you're going to eat them because if you don't eat them you're going to be wasting your time and your money uh, you don't want those things to go to waste I, I went through a phase where i was canning everything and two years later i still have not even two i think five years later i still have some things i haven't opened yet so i was just going through that you know Oh, I want to can everything phase, but know what you want to can. Okay, so on to the notes. Before canning day, what you need to do first is find a tomato source and find a source with reasonably priced tomatoes. They don't have to be fresh off a farm. They could be hothouse tomatoes. They could be greenhouse tomatoes. Like last March, I ran out of tomatoes and one of the markets in town was selling them for 79 cents a pound and they were greenhouse tomatoes. But I didn't care. I just went and I bought 80 pounds of them and I canned them and I ran out like four months later. <laughs> but you know, that's another thing. You have to know how much you're going to eat. And it's hard to calculate these things. You have to kind of go year by year and start off slowly and figure it all out. This is the first year that I figured that I would go through about 300 pounds of tomatoes. So it took me that long and I've been canning probably for about six years now. But the last four years I've been really seriously canning and trying to be frugal and put up in the pantry what I would need for a year. So that's something you have to think about too. So sources for tomatoes. I got lucky this year and there is a local farm that's not too far away from where I live and they have beautiful field tomatoes. So I approached the owner and I said, you know what? I kind of think I need 300 pounds of tomatoes this year. And she's like, do you own a restaurant? <laughs> no, I mean, she looked at me like, really that many? And I explained to her, because when, when you tell someone you need 300 pounds of tomatoes, they kind of wonder, you know, you're, you're one person here. And, you know, I don't have kids and a huge family and things like that. But I, I told her, you know, basically my diet is tomato based. And so she was okay with it. And then, you know, she, she let me have the first 200 pounds and I, I paid $1.10 a pound. And usually my limit is $1 a dollar a pound. But because this place was so close by, the tomatoes were just beautiful. They were freshly picked the day I went to pick them up. I couldn't complain about the extra 10 cents a pound because what I used to do in the past is I used to drive to the nearest town. There was a, a wholesale market there and I would get my tomatoes there. For the last two years, that's where I got my tomatoes. But I had to keep an eye on the flyers and I had to look every week to see if the the tomatoes were on sale at a price that I really wanted to pay. And then I had to call and I had to I hate to say it, but beg for my 180 pounds or 100 pounds or 80 pounds of tomatoes. And they would set them aside for me. But because they 
came from somewhere else. Sometimes they came from the States, sometimes they came from Canada. I'm in Canada. But they were probably sitting in the truck for a while. There was the transport time and then they were sitting in, in the store for a while. I'd say about 5% of those tomatoes were unusable and um, they weren't as fresh as I wanted them to be. So I was okay with paying $1.10 a pound for these tomatoes. And basically this is gonna be my source for tomatoes as long as they grow them. But you can also go to a local farmer's market. You can ask your neighbors. Um, you can do a search on the internet where to find wholesale tomatoes, where to find a farm, that, a tomato farm in your area. One thing that I used to do was I would go to my local grocery store and I would speak to the grocery manager and I would ask him where he got his tomatoes. And I would ask, you know, when you get tomatoes in for this price, you know, would I be able to get like a huge amount of them? And so, you know, just talk to people or talk to the store manager and see if you can find a source for your tomatoes. Oh, and another thing to keep in mind is if you're buying your tomatoes from the grocery store and you see that they're on sale at a good price, don't just show up at the grocery store and expect to like, you know, take all their tomatoes from them. They don't put out everything that they have in stock. Call the grocery manager and tell them, look, I saw in your flyer you have tomatoes for 79 cents a pound. I'd like to buy 100 pounds of them. Is that okay with you? When can I come and pick them up? Because if you just show up, they're not likely to bring out a whole bunch for you. You really have to talk to, to the grocery store manager. And like I said, I used to do that with many things I used to do that. Um, another thing is you have to keep an eye on the flyers. If you're buying from a grocery store, keep your eye on the flyers and call the grocery store manager the day the flyer comes out where it's on sale so that you can secure the amount that you want. Another thing is cost. I spent, how much did it come to? I'm tomatoed out right now, so I can't figure it out, but I guess it was $330 for 300 pounds of tomatoes. But again, that's going to feed me for an entire year, which is amazing when you think about it, just the base of things. You know, obviously I'm gonna have to add onions and garlic and basil and what have you. And I have the pasta and, and the pizza dough and, you know, the, the tortillas and anything else that goes with it. But still, that's going to basically be the base of my meals for the next year. So what I usually do is I ration out how much I think I'm going to pay in the fall for my tomatoes. And I put that aside in my tomato fund every month, you know, for in my grocery bill. I put a certain amount aside every month for the tomato fund. And that brings me to step two of before canning day, and that's preparing your equipment. Um, you have to make sure you have enough jars and lids and rings. I have probably close to 400 mason jars in my collection. <laughs> I've been collecting them for 10 or 15 years now. When I go to thrift stores or garage sales, if I see mason jars, I grab them. And... I also buy them new from the store when they're on sale. And what you need to do is ration that money out also over the year, because if you think you're gonna need, I forget how many I, I needed, um, 223, is that possible? 223 jars for 300 pounds of tomatoes or something like that. Um, that's expensive when you think about it, because uh, the local Canadian Tire store here in Canada sells a 12-pack of pint mason jars, that's 500 mils, for I think $12.99 plus tax. And if you need to buy like 250, like that's a big chunk of money coming out of your budget. So plan accordingly and maybe work your way up. You can start the first year with canning 20 pounds of tomatoes and you've got those jars. And then next year go up to 60, you buy some more jars, you know, you check around at the thrift stores and the garage sales and get them when they're on sale. And you start to build, it's an investment, but you start to build it up. This year I had to buy some new, but next year I'm not gonna have to buy any more jars. I My jar, you know, database, so to speak, is complete. But the rings and the lids, you have to make sure you have them. The rings, I 
reuse. As long as they're in good shape, I reuse them. So I rarely have to buy new rings. Maybe every couple of years I buy some more rings. And rings are hard to find alone. Uh, you can buy them off Amazon, but here's a little bit of warning. This year I bought some knockoff rings on Amazon. And when I went to start using them, they didn't fit properly. They were all warped. They were horrible. So buy the brand name rings if you have to buy more rings. It's worth the extra money because, you know, I bought my rings back in, I think it was in April, in anticipation for September's harvest. And by now it's too late to return them. So that was wasted money. They, it was just a waste. So Buy, buy the brand name. I think it's Bernardin, there's Ball, and there's Golden Harvest mason jars. Those are the big three that I know of. Make sure you have enough rings and lids. I know that some people reuse their lids. I personally don't. I don't want to re reuse my lids ever because I feel like the seal might break. You know, there, it's specifically there to seal your jar to keep your food safe from botulism, right? So I don't like to reuse my lids. And I do, again, the same thing that I do when I'm budgeting and when I buy my jars throughout the years, uh, throughout the months, like I used to do. I do the same thing. On my grocery bill, on my grocery list every month, I write down mason jar lids. And whenever I see them, I grab a couple of them and I keep a stock of them because... You know, when COVID hit in 2020, I tried to find rings. I tried to find lids. I tried to find mason jars. I had such a hard time finding them. And I wasn't able to can everything that I wanted to. So you just never know. I'm not saying hoard them. I'm just saying, you know, every time you go to the grocery store, put a pack of lids in your, in your grocery cart. Put a pack of jars in your grocery cart and just, you know, build them up that way. Um, another thing you need to make sure you have enough of is lemon juice because you have to acidify your tomatoes to water bath can them in order to keep them safe. And this is a bit technical, but I'm going to tell you anyway. If you want to keep your tomatoes or tomato juice or any tomato product from, um, um, I'm, I'm missing my words here, from... Uh, creating bacteria, let's just say, in the jars, they have to have a pH level of 4.6 or lower. Most tomatoes already have a pH level of 4.6 or lower. You know, back in the day, great, great, great grandma didn't put lemon juice in her tomatoes when she canned them. But the, uh, I think it's the Food and Drug Administration of the U.S. Um, suggests for safety to put lemon juice into your jars so you at least are sure that they are 4.6 pH or less because some varieties of tomatoes are actually higher than 4.6 so it's better to be safe than sorry at least I think so. You need a canner with a good rack, a canning pot, you can find them in any big box store or Walmart, Canadian Tire, any place like that. One note on the canning rack when, when I bought my canner many, many years ago, an old canner that I no longer have, uh, the rack that came with it was not very good. The pint jars went in there really okay, but if I put anything smaller in there, they would fall out the side. So make sure you have a good canning rack. Uh, you need some tools. You need to have um, a canning jar lifter. You need a wide mouth funnel. You need a tool like this, which is called um, a debubbler, and it's also a headspace measuring tool. If you look at the end of this tool, it has little notches in it, and it has one inch, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, quarter of an inch. And when you read recipes about canning, they always tell you to leave a certain amount of headspace. For example, the tomatoes, you need a half an inch of headspace. For tomato juice, you need one inch of he headspace. So this is a very handy tool, and you just stick it on the side of your jar in the notch that you want for your me measurement, and you'll see where you need to stop your liquid. And it shouldn't be too much lower, and it should definitely not be higher, because if you have too much liquid, uh, you won't have a good seal. And this is good. It's a debubbler, too. You just take it, and you kind of push it, into your jar before you put the lid on to take all the bubbles out. 
You're also going to need pots and ladles and strainers, colanders, towels, paper towels. You need room to work. I have a tiny, tiny little kitchen and it's really difficult to find room to work. You're going to need time. If you work full time and you do what I do and buy 300 pounds of tomatoes, you're going to be up all night and all weekend getting those tomatoes canned because even if they're freshly picked, if they're sitting in those boxes for three, four, five, six, seven days, they could develop mold. So you have to have time to be able to do it. So really pace yourself and you need a place to store them. You need to store your, your cans of food in a nice cool area where they will be safe. So take all of this, what I'm saying, you know, and keep it all in mind when you're thinking of starting to put up, as they say, put up your pantry for the winter. Now, over the years, I've figured out how many jars I will need depending on how many tomatoes I buy. And it's better to have too many jars, lids and rings than too little because you don't want to be running out, you know, like I, like I did this year at like eight o'clock at night. I live very far away from the nearest town. So it's like an hour's drive. I had to drive out and pick up a couple of um, packs of jars and lids and rings this year. And you don't want to be doing that because a lot of the times, this is the time of year when people snatch all that up. So you have to be careful. You might just arrive at the store and there won't be anything. So be prepared. Um, my calculation, based on my experience over the years, is that 20 pounds of tomatoes, depending on how you can them, of course, will fit into about 10 to 12 pint jars. And if you juice the cores and discard the bits and the seeds like I do, I use those to, to make my tomato juice, 20 pounds of the discarded pieces and the seeds and the cores will fit into between four and six jars. For the lemon juice, you need one tablespoon per pint jar. One tablespoon is 15 milliliters. I'm gonna write all this down in my checklist, so I'm just going over this. So I'll give you a good example. If you're canning 40 pounds of tomatoes, you'll need about 24 pints for the tomatoes and 12 pints for the juice if you want to make tomato juice. So make sure you have 36 pint jars with lids and rings available. And you'll also need to multiply 15 milliliters by the number of jars. So in this example, the number of jars is 36. So that comes out to 540 milliliters of lemon juice that you're going to need for your canning. So that'll give, an, give you an idea of what you need ahead of time to prepare for your canning day. And what I want to say for step number three is prep. Being organized when you're doing large batches of canning is so essential because we're all busy. We all have other things to do. I mean, if you're a gardener, this is the time of year in the fall when you're harvesting, when you're preparing your house for the winter, if you own your house, um, you're also preparing your garden possibly for the spring. You might be planting garlic, you might be planting tulip bulbs, you might be like I was, trying to get rid of the wasp problem that happens every fall. Prep. If you've got your tomato sauce, You've got all of your equipment in your jars and your lids and your lemon juice and your rings. You have everything ready. You've got like a whole bunch of pots. You know what you're doing. You've gone through your checklist. You're organized. Make sure you prep as much as you can. If you know your tomatoes are coming tomorrow or worse, if you buy from a grocery store and you don't know when your tomatoes are coming, you have to call the manager and say, okay, when can I get them? And he says, well, if you come tomorrow, I'll put them aside for you. Then you have to giddy up and get those tomatoes tomorrow. So it's good to be prepared. What I do is I wash every single jar that I own available for canning and I dry them and I line a box with paper towel and I put them upside down in the box. And then I put another a layer of paper towel and I put more and I do that for all of my my jars and by the way for the purposes of all my my videos I say cans mason jars jars or pints that all means the same thing it's a 500 milliliter or pint mason jar that's 
what I referred to. So I prepare all my cans ahead of time. I also wash my lids and my rings and I put all of those into a zip top bag so everything's ready to go when my tomatoes arrive. That helps me not to be too overwhelmed with the process. So that's the checklist for before canning day. Here is the checklist for canning day. The first thing you want to do, I say canning day, but for me it's canning days. 300 pounds of tomatoes took six days to can in total, and that's um, the 164 pint jars of tomatoes that I canned and the 59 pint jars of tomato sauce that I canned. So it's a big endeavor, but six days of work, a year's worth of food, I find that totally worth it. So for your canning day or days, the first thing you want to do is clean your workspace and bring out everything you have, everything that you need so that you're ready and it's handy. If you have a big kitchen table or an island, put everything on there and just warn the family, warn whoever lives with you that the kitchen might be off limits for a couple of days because you need that space for your canning. Also, what you want to do before you start, you know, you've got your tomatoes ready, you're going to wash them, but before you start washing them and preparing all that, get everything ready and then put a big pot of water on the stove and turn the burner up so that it will heat because you need, you want to try to save as much time as possible and be as efficient as possible. So I'm giving you little tips. Right before you start washing your tomatoes, put that big, big pot of boiling water on so that it's ready when you're at the step of dipping them in, okay? So here is my procedure. Step one, wash your tomatoes. I wash them all at the same time and I set them on a towel on my counter. Now at this point, you can also check your tomatoes to make sure they look good. You know, you're washing them, look at them. It's possible that some of them might have mold on them. It's possible that some of them might have holes in them. You want to make sure your tomatoes are looking good. If one is really mushy and black, get rid of that right away. <laughs> Don't even, you know, just get rid of that right away. Throw it into the compost pile, whatever you need to do, but don't can a squishy black tomato, okay? So as you're washing, it's a good time for you to check your tomatoes out to make sure they're in good shape. Step number two, score the tomatoes. Now what you do for scoring the tomatoes is you take your washed tomato and you turn it upside down so that the bottom of it is facing you and you take a sharp knife and you make an X. You cut an X into it. And I do this with all of my tomatoes. Step three is dipping the tomatoes into boiling water. And that's why you put the boiling water on before you started washing so that it would be ready by the time you're at that step, right? So you want to dip each tomato into the boiling water. You don't have to do it one at a time. I put maybe 10 in there at the same time because I have a nice big pot. And you leave them in the boiling water for about 30 seconds to a minute. Don't leave them in too long because they might get mushy. But once you see that where you scored, that it starts to tear a little bit down the tomato, that means they're ready to pop out. That's Sometimes it only takes 20 seconds. The, I find that the larger the tomato, the quicker it starts, the peel starts to tear. And that's what you want because that's going to make it easy for peeling. And you don't want to cook your tomatoes in the boiling water. You just want to dip them in long enough so that they start to, the peel starts to crack. Okay, step number four, peeling the tomatoes. Now you may have to wear latex gloves or dish gloves if you have a small amount and they're still hot. You can let them cool a little bit, but you want to peel your tomatoes and they should peel right off. If you've scored them and they started to crack a little bit, the peels will come right off. And what I do at this point is I do all of it together. I'm someone who needs to be organized and I know that you can do a little bit at a time. You could wash some, score some, dip and peel and then get them ready for canning and then do the next stage and all that. But I like to do everything all at once. And when I'm doing a large amount, like I said, I did 300 pounds this year. 
I decided to do about 60 to 80 pounds a day and that's what I did. So I would wash all of the 60 to 80 pounds, then I would score them all, then I would dip them all, then I would peel them all. It's just the way I am so that I don't get overwhelmed with the process and forget a step. So what I do is I bring out all the bowls and pans and plates that I have. I peel everything and I set them all in bowls and they're ready to go to be chopped and I cover them with cling film at that point just so because sometimes you know when you bring in a large amount of tomatoes you get fruit flies and so I cover them to make sure the fruit flies don't get to them step number five is to chop and boil your tomatoes what I do is I chop them up in quarters if they're smaller if they're larger tomatoes I chop them up in either eighths or sometimes sixteenth if I have really giant tomatoes I personally do not can the, um, I don't can them whole, so I discard the cores. I put those into one bowl and I don't can the seeds. I pull all the seeds out of them. I de-seed them and any part that looks green inside the core of the tomato, inside the, you know, what I've chopped up on the tomato, I put that into a bowl. If there are any pieces that are brown or black or that don't look nice, you can chop those off and put them into a different bowl ready for the compost because what I do with the cores and the seeds is that I keep them to put through my juicer to make tomato juice. And so I usually put those when I when I have a bowl full, I, I transfer them into zip top bags that I've recycled over the years and I put them into the fridge until I'm ready to juice them and can the tomato juice. But I don't wait too long because I don't want them to start fermenting and getting bad and smelling bad. So I put them in the fridge. I don't throw those into the compost, but that's your choice. If you don't want to make tomato juice, I'm sure the compost would love that. So once you've deseeded and cored your tomatoes and quartered them or chopped them up, put them into your pots and bring them to a boil, cover them and let them simmer for about 10 minutes. And then they're, they're going to be ready to can. So step number six is canning your tomatoes. What I do about five minutes before I'm going to can them is I take my mason jars and I put them in the sink and I fill them with hot water. I don't like to put hot liquid into cold jars. That's just me. This is an optional thing that you can do because I've been collecting jars for 15 years and all the jars that I bought last week are all mixed up with the jars that I may have bought 15 years ago secondhand so I don't even know how old they are. I want to give them a fighting chance so that they don't crack. So I take these little extra steps to do that. So once they're hot for five minutes then I dump out the water either into my canning pot or into another pot because I don't want to waste water, water either and then they're ready to start putting the uh, tomatoes in. So what I do is the first thing I do is I add one tablespoon of lemon juice into each can and that's the amount you need for a pint. If you're doing liters you need two tablespoons. Personally speaking I don't do um, liters or quarts in my water bath canner. It's said that you're supposed to be able to but I found that when I put quarts in there or liter jars there's not enough room on the top to put enough water. You need an inch of water when you're canning your jars and the inch of water comes right up to the top of the canner and it just splashes all over the place so in my water bath canner I don't know why they don't make them a little taller but anyway I can only do pints or smaller so what I do is I add the lemon juice and then I fill the jars with my tomatoes to half an inch of headspace and that's where that little measuring tool comes in really handy I debubble the jars with that same tool and then I wipe the top of the jars to make sure there's no food residue lingering on top because if you have food on top of the lids on top of the lids of your jar and then you put the lid on it's going to have a little break in the seal and you could risk having botulism and we don't want to poison anyone so then I place the lid on the jar and the ring and the ring should really only be finger tight. You don't want to really jam it on there because you might not have an easy time getting it off. So then the next, you know, what I do after this is I carefully take my jars and I put them in my canner. And I can only fit eight pints in my canner. So then I lower the rack into the water. And like I said, make sure there's at least one inch of water on top of the cans and I cover the canner and I turn the burner on high. 
When I get a rolling boil, that's when I start my timer for 40 minutes. So the next step is removing the jars from your canner. If you want, you can use your jar lifter. I'm, I'm used to the heat, so I just use dish gloves, but you know, don't do what I do, be safe. <laughs> you know how hot things are, it's boiling water and there's steam too, so be really careful not to burn yourself. After the processing time of 40 minutes, I turn the burner off and I take off the cover of the canner and I let it sit there for 10 minutes just to, you know, just to sit there and the rolling boil just calms down. And then I carefully remove the jars and I put them on a table, on my kitchen table, on top of a towel. And what I do again to give, you know, like I mentioned, putting the hot water into the jars, I want to give my jars a fighting chance not to crack. So I take a towel and I put it over the jars. So the next morning you want to make sure that your jars are sealed. What you do is you take your finger and push on the top of the jar, not too hard, just touch it. And if they don't pop up and down, they're sealed and they're ready to be stored for who knows how long. If they pop up and down, they have not sealed properly. So you want to use that, put it in your fridge and use that within a week or so. So step eight is to repeat all of the above steps until you're out of tomatoes. Step nine is storing your pint jars. You can label them if you like. What I do sometimes if I'm, um, if I'm canning a lot of different things that look the same, you know, if I'm canning pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce and tomatoes and tomato juice, what I'll do is I'll take a Sharpie and on the lids, because I don't reuse the lids, I just write what it is and the date and that's it. You can do that if you want. And you want to store them in a nice cool area where they will be safe. The rule of thumb is not to stack your mason jars because you don't want anything messing with the seal. And what I do is, because I have lack of space, what I do is I undo the rings a little bit so that they're not completely you know, finger tight. I undo the rings, they lift, and I put my mason jars down, I put a piece of cardboard on top, and then I stack one more layer of mason jars. That way they're kind of sitting on the ring instead of sitting on the actual lid of the jar so it, sh it doesn't break the seal. I've been doing that for years. I know it might be frowned upon, but I've been doing it for years and it works for me. And lastly, how long do they last? Well, you can do your research. The it's hard to tell because if you look at the official sites like, you know, the, the Food and Drug Administration, um, Ball's canning website, some of these places say that you should use up your cans within one year. And there are some people who claim these things will last 20 years through the apocalypse. So do your own research and do what makes you feel comfortable. I personally like to use my canned goods within a year or two. Okay, step number 10, if you're canning tomato juice, what you want to do is remove as much of the juice from the discarded cores and seeds as possible. Um, I use a juicer and then I push it all of that through a fine sieve to make sure there's no seeds in it. I personally don't know how I would do this without a juicer. I've read that what you can do is take all the discarded bits and squeeze them and push them through a fine sieve to get as much juice out of them as possible. I think that would take so much time and there would be a lot of waste, but if you want to do that, go ahead if you don't have a juicer. I My juicer saved me this year because I got 59 pints of tomato juice out of all the discarded bits and I don't think I would have gotten that much and I probably would have been too frustrated to do it and I would have tossed it into the compost pile. So once you get all of your juice out and you've put it through a fine sieve, stick it in a pot or two and bring it up to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 88 degrees Celsius. Now this is what I read on the ball canning website, that if you bring it up to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it won't separate badly in the can when you preserve it, when you process it and then uh, stick it on the, the shelf, I mean. Now when I did mine, it didn't, the, the juice did not separate during the, the processing time, but I noticed a day or two later there was just a little bit 
that had separated, but all I had to do was shake it up and it was fine. So I don't know, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. And for the tomato juice, it's basically the same procedure. One tablespoon of lemon juice into the jar after you heat, if you want to put, put the uh, hot water in the jars to heat them up, empty out the hot water. And I mentioned before that I put it into a pod because I like to keep the water and then reuse it. You know, I keep it on a low simmer to make sure it's hot, to make sure that uh, I don't waste all that water. Anytime that I'm heating up my jars, I just take the water from the pot and do it that way. So it's just, like I said, the same procedure, one tablespoon of lemon juice, but for tomato juice, you need one inch headspace and it's the same processing time. You, I mean, you have to debubble and wipe your lids and everything like that. 40 minutes of processing time. And then you've got your tomato juice. So that's basically water bath canning tomatoes 101. And I hope that was easy to understand. And if you have my canning checklist, maybe you followed along. This is just a little lesson today to teach you ahead of time what's involved with all of this. You know, it's there's a lot of little steps that you have to think about. But once you get a hang of it, it's easy. And, you know, at first I was a little overwhelmed. So I, I would suggest that you start with something really small, 20 pounds of tomatoes or something like that. And then you get used to the process. And then next year, like I said, go up to 40 and then 60. And if you're crazy like me, go up to 300 pounds. <laughs> and I just want to say a little note on the tomato juice. The tomato juice that you're going to can from the cores and the seeds and the discarded little bits does not taste like tomato juice you would buy at the store. It tastes like a very earthy tomato juice because think about what you're juicing. Cores, seeds something that we normally wouldn't eat, right? I personally like the taste of that. So it might be an acquired taste for you. I just wanted to put that little warning up just in case you go and you do what I did and you fill 59 pint jars full of tomato juice and you sip it and you go, Ugh. <laughs> you might need to add a little salt or maybe some Worcestershire sauce, some Tabasco. I think it tastes nice. I like the taste of it anyway. So that's the video for today, my friends. I hope that this was very informative for you and I hope that you try doing some canning. Let me know in the comments if you do some canning, if you can tomatoes and if you can a crazy amount like I do. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I am very appreciative of everybody who comes to this channel and watches my videos. And don't forget to download my checklist. It's in the description below. And if you want to watch the um, part twos, parts two and three of this series. Part two is canning the tomatoes and part three is canning the tomato juice. I'll put the links in the description below also and maybe if I can figure out how to do the cards up here I'll do that too. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time on Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Bye!